Hey YouTube. <clears throat> this is a little video this morning about uh, honing. I'm not going to bore you to death with making you watch the hone work, but uh, here's what you're after. What you're after, let's see if I can get this cheap Harbor Freight flashlight to work. What you're after, let me take the camera off here, is the uh, same even surface. If you look in there, it's a nice ground surface or hone surface, every one of them. Now, there, I put oil back in the cylinders to keep them from rusting. But, uh, so these, this side is done, this bank. Now, I haven't finished the other bank. And you can see where it's like real shiny. I took the ridge off, but the rest of the cylinder is shiny. You need to get that shine out of there. Because if this if the the bore is actually hardened sort of and filled with oil into the pores so much that you get this shiny let me see if I could bring it up through the bottom this shiny looking surface there and what happens is when you put new rings in the engine the rings will not form or wear properly into what the, the you know into the cylinder and they'll burn oil for a while until they do wear and it'll take a thousands of miles to get them to wear in properly so honing a cylinder is a matter of getting the cylinder to all look the same through the whole thing I don't care what other people say if you don't like what I'm saying turn to you know watch something else but anyway you want the cylinder the hones that are the cylinders to have that same honed finish all the way down through now here's here's how you here's how I hone I shouldn't say you, God forbid I should insist that something be done. But let me just show you this. Um, here's what I do to home. Two important things. One is that you have a bucket of water. Okay? And two, I tried using cutting oil. That doesn't work. Alright? And I've always used this type of stuff, liquid wrench. The problem with this liquid wrench naturally is it stinks so bad and actually, you know, when, when I get done working with this during the day, i got to take all my clothes off before my wife lets me in the house and then she washes my clothes. But anyway, so you'd use liquid wrench and the way you go and what I have is a small razor blade, alright? Now here's the thing with this um, hone. When you use the hone, let's try and get it over here. When you use the hone, the stones tend to pick up uh, the grit, and not just grit, but the metal that's coming off of the um, cylinder. And it's actually very pasty. So what I do, and the best way to do this, is I'll take a razor blade. Now I am not pushing hard on this, I'm not changing the shape of anything. Just go over top of that a couple of times of each one and like there's nothing on here now because I had washed this last night before I uh, quit for the night but use that razor blade every now and then but what you want to do is actually take and I have a bucket of water here you actually take the uh, home put it into the water and just slop it up and leave it washed leave it clean the, the stones off and you can see how dirty that water was. That water actually was a uh, clean, warm water. So I'll clean, I'll, I take and clean the stones off. And I'll uh, take them and dry them with the dreaded blue paper towel. Just tap them, just enough to get the water droplets off. And then take liquid wrench. You can spray it in the cylinder if you want, but I found that if you put it onto the stones, what will happen is it fills the pores of the stone with oil and it stops the uh, material from getting inside there. So I said I wouldn't bore you with honing, but I guess I lied. I'm going to give you a little bit of what I do here. So you squeeze the hone together, put it in there, and you know if you move this up and down or sideways a little bit, everybody's saying, oh you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Well, you know, you don't this, these hones are not going to hurt these cylinders by dragging them over the thing unless there's, you know, unless you have the pressure up so high on the screw here that you, that you can't even pull it in or out. 
But anyway, on a Chevy, this dome is perfect for this because as you start to hone, and I'll start very slowly, as you start to hone and you work your way down in, that dome, you want that dome to end right there. This way you won't hit the connecting or the uh, web that goes from one side of the cylinder to the other because you can break the stone and the problem with that is if you break the stone and you try to pull this out you could be metal against metal so basically what you want to do is just as I'm showing you there and the other thing hold on a second uh, the other thing is that you want to clean the cylinder so I jumped the gun there a little bit I had oil inside these cylinders uh, before I went into the house last night and the reason for that is so that you know it doesn't rust. So dry the cylinder again with the dreaded linty blue paper towel that everybody seems to be afraid of. All you can do is keep your eyes open and watch for lint. Yes, lint does come off the rag. Alright, so anyway you dry that off good until you're barely getting anything. That's really not that much. Clean the hone in the water. Okay, clean the hone in the water. Take the hone. Sorry about the camera, guys. I was talking to, or I was wrote a, uh, an email to somebody who told me that a Sony Handy Cam is a way to go, a cheap way. So I'm all about cheap. So I'm going to go and uh, get that. So you wipe the stones off. Put a little bit of penetrating oil on there. Okay. Squeeze it. Put it back into the cylinder and then just start working it. And what I'll do is at the top of the cylinder, you know, you have a a, discolor, a, a, a little bit of roughness where you, uh, you, where I use the ridge reamer to take the ridge out. So you want to sort of work that pretty well. So I might hold it still there just for a couple seconds. You don't want to go real, real fast. That's not going to help you. About half throttle on my Milwaukee drill here. And I'm just going to work down to where that dome is and back and forth. And I don't care if it takes me a half an hour or 45 minutes of doing this. I'm going to do it until that cylinder all looks the same. And I would say that after about 30 of these up and down things, or maybe even 50 of them, okay, after you're done with that, look, you want to wipe the cylinder, wipe the cylinder out. You can see that's actually metal and some of the stone probably showing up and, and oil. And what you want to do is you want to look. You want to look at that cylinder. Now you can see where there's some shiny rings in there. Okay, It doesn't take much for the hone to start to work. But you want that surface to be... Um, you see this wide part right in here where it's ground there. You want that entire cylinder to look like that. I don't care what anybody says about, oh, you're taking too much off. I'm not taking hardly anything off of here. You're talking about something you can't even feel with your finger. So you want to get that cylinder to look like that. That same honed thing all the way down through to the bottom. And like I say, <laughs> if you're not careful, if you look down and you can see the webbing to the crank, you will hit that, especially like on the second one here, <coughs> excuse me, the third one has a bad one sticking up, and the fourth one. So just be careful with it. Know what your limit is. Put a piece of tape on your thing or mark it somehow so you know where to stop. All right, so it's about, I don't know, a good three quarters of an inch after you're at the bottom of the cylinder. So you don't really have to kill yourself getting to the bottom of the cylinder. Okay, guys, so what you're after is one even surface. Take the tool after every 30, um, excuse the camera again, after every 30 or 50 up and downs, put it in the water. Just squeeze it, let it do its thing. It'll clean itself off pretty nice. What you want to do then, like I say, is dry, just damp, dry it with by touching the stone a little bit and then spray penetrating oil on there and you would be surprised how fast this works and how good it works alright so you don't need a whole lot of fancy tools to do this 
I bought this uh, hone. Oh my god, I must have that hone 40 years like I got everything else. I bought it a long time ago. Been using it ever since. I think it's a craftsman. You can buy stones just about at any Napa. Although you got to watch the mouth of these. Let me just show you what I got here. Um, these stones here, this brand, Evercraft, they sell some of this at Napa, or at least my local Napa. These actually don't fit this. They won't fit inside the jaw. What you do is you just pull a cotter pin out and put a new stone in. Now these are a three inch stone here. These are four inch. I'd rather have the four inch, but uh, I can't find any for this thing anymore. Probably Sears would have some. But I did, uh, if you look on Napa's website, I don't know if I have, oh here's the paper. I probably lost the rest of it. But they, it comes in a package that looks something like this. There were three stones in there, and they actually do fit that. I can't, I don't see the rest of my paper. Alright guys, so basically, water to clean the hone. If, if the hone gets to the point where it's really dirty, what you want to do is just take your take a flat razor blade. Do not push hard on this. Just drag it over the top. About like that. And it'll pull. You can see there's a little bit of stuff on the blade right there. It'll pull off, you know, some of that excess gr uh, grit that's in there and uh, metal filings. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Have a good one. It's a cloudy day in Pennsylvania, or foggy day, I should say. Bullseye's enjoying a rawhide strip. Have a good one, guys. Bye.